Hi everybody, welcome back to the Feynman Technique. Um, today I have another integral I got off the channel Owl3. I will link to his video in the description. Uh, his is, our solutions are kind of similar. I'm just going to be taking a classic Feynman integration approach to this, however. Um, I will link to his video in the description, so go ahead and check out his video. He has a great channel. He does a lot of really cool integrals. <clears throat> um, but anyway, here we go. So our first step, we're just going to recognize that sine 2x is simply 2 cosine x sine x. And we're going to rewrite our integral using that. So it just becomes this. Um, go ahead and uh, pause the video and take a look at that if you want. But it's pretty straightforward. Next, we're going to make the substitution that u is equal to tangent x. And it implies all the following. From u is equal to tangent x, you can... You know, build a triangle and find uh, what sine, sine of x is based on that. You can find out what cosine of x is based on that. And then um, you can just let x equal arctangent u to get dx is equal to 1 over u squared plus 1 du. Um, so that that's going to be all the pieces of our substitution. Of course, our bounds of integration are going to change. Um, if uh, tangent x is pi over 2, u is going to be infinity, and if tangent x is, um, or I'm sorry, if x is pi over 2, our u will be infinity, and if our x is 0, um, our u will be 0. So, continuing on, we just put those pieces back into the integral. I literally just replaced all the uh, pieces of this with what we found them to be um, and change the bounds of integration and then I simplified. So that our new uh, version of I simply becomes this. All right, so now comes time for our reparameterization. We're going to let some f of t be equal to this integral right here. You can see I just, all I did was I got rid of this one half because we don't need it right now. Um, and I replaced this negative u over square root of 3 with a negative t u. Um, and using that reparameterization, we can see that if we evaluate our function at square root of 3, we will get 0. Because if our t is square root of 3, we just have uh, 0 here on the top, so the entire integral goes to 0. And then if we take one half of our f of t evaluated at 1 over square root of 3, we get back exactly this thing, which is the value of our original integral that we uh, set out to solve. All right. So next, we're going to take uh, the derivative of our f of t um, with respect to t, obviously, using the Leibniz rule for differentiation under the integral sign. So all we, all we have to do is um, take the partial with respect to t of the integrand here, and this is what it becomes. And that integral right there is very easy to evaluate. It evaluates to negative 1 over t, as, uh, provided that t is greater than 0. Because if you can see that if t is not greater than 0, this integral would not converge. So next, we go. Uh, we want to get back to f of t, so we just integrate our um, expression for f prime of t, which is negative 1 over t, um, and we end up uh, integrating that. We get negative natural log t plus c. So now we're going to use the fact that we know that if we evaluate our function at the point at t is equal to square root of 3, we get 0. So we set 0 equal to this thing when t is uh, the square root of 3. And that's going to imply, that's going to give us a, a c value of natural log square root of 3. So plugging that back in, and we have our final expression for f of t, and it is negative natural log t plus natural log square root of 3. And now recall that if we evaluate our function um, f at the point 1 over square root of 3 and take half of it, we get our original integral. So I just, I just plugged in uh, t is equal to 1 over square root of 3 right here. I just plugged it in. I took half of it, and that simplifies to this. You can see that this 1 over square root of 3, we can bring out as a, we can get rid of that um, negative sign 
by just taking the reciprocal of that. And then we have two natural log square root of three over two, which simplifies to simply natural log three over two. So putting it all together, we have that the integral from zero to pi over two of e to the negative tangent x over square root of three minus e to the negative square root of three tangent x over sine of two x dx is equal to natural log three over two. All right, guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed that and we'll see you next time.